We were talking about you, uh, as a matter of fact, last night. And we were talking about the job you did here and the, 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 the fact that you went to Liverpool and then uh, a whole bunch of jobs after that. But this nearly place... Nearly Crystal Palace. That's, that's right. Well, well, Simon was telling us a story. He interviewed you for the Palace job. Yes. Yeah? Frightened me. That's not true. <laughs> it was the other way around. <laughs> what happened? Why did The it first not thing happen? he said to me, he said, I thought you'd be bigger than this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the stature of him, Graham. Yeah, yeah. It's the stature and the suaveness of him. How do you, I mean, in the time that we've got, there isn't enough time to, to cover it all. How do you look back in your time here, Graham? you got a special tingle when you walk back through the front door here, Ivor. Oh, handsome. This, this was, um, you know, I supported this team as a boy. Uh, at the time, I was offered a job. I was playing in Italy. I had another year on the contract. Time I was offered a job, I was playing in Italy. I had another year on the contract, um, loving life in, in Italy, and then I was offered this, and it was just something I couldn't say no to. And I had five years here, the people I worked with, fortunately, it went well for us. You know, I wouldn't want to be in this town if it wasn't going well, but it went really well for us. And um, I just love coming back. It's, mm. it's one of those, I look back now and think, you know, and at the time, you know, I was young and felt I could take the world on. It was the wrong time for me to take a Liverpool job and certainly the wrong time to leave this football club. You know, I'd done the hard work, if you like, and, you know, it was nine years since I'd won a league. We managed to win a league in the first year, and then so we had a good team going forward, and then I was offered a Liverpool job, and, and looking back, I regret taking it at that time, because I think I would, have, I would have been offered it at another time as well. You regret taking it then? Oh, yeah. 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 And so Postacoglu brings Celtic here on Sunday. It's his first old firm game. The man to your left, John Hartson, played in plenty of them, scored a, a shed load of goals for Celtic. What could you say to Postacoglu about what he should expect when he comes here? Well, like John, I've been involved in many different derbies. This is a big one. There isn't anything bigger because there is an unsavoury side to it, which is a religious factor. But, you know, apart from them being two enormous football clubs, you, know, you factor in the other, the other side of it, and it, it's just enormous. What it means to people, it's just off the charts. You know, Galatasaray, Fenerbahce, this is, this is bigger. Mm. Rangers, Celtic is the biggest. Everton, Liverpool, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, because, you know, the passion that you'll see here at the weekend... I've not seen anywhere else. Mm. It's 50,000, Graham. It's all Rangers. Uh, when, when you had Rangers here and you were in charge of Rangers, of course, Celtic would have that stand there, the Broomlone stand. But it's all Rangers, and that's between the two clubs to sort out. Do, do you feel that, that you know, that the, the occasion isn't the same without an element of the away support in here? I, I, I believe that. You know, from from um, playing side of it and to managing I'd want the opposition supporters in. I think it adds the spice. It's it's the way it's always been, the way it should always be. The thing is, Gray, sorry for butting in there, but when you come to the fans, it's uh, I remember why it happened, Jim, and, and how it happened. Because when, when Celtic were on six, seven, eight in a row titles, they used to bring 10,000 here. And when Celtic were quite dominant at that time, we're talking three or four years ago now, very, very dominant, winning everything. Um, when Celtic used to win, the players would be jumping everywhere and a lot of the fans would stay in, the Rangers fans, and it was starting to get a little bit toxic, a bit nasty. Sure. So Rangers called it. They banned the Celtic fans and they gave them an allocation of about 800 fans. And then Celtic reacted to that and they did exactly the same then when Rangers fans and come to Celtic. For ta- ever but since. but it, was, it was Rangers who yeah. initially started it because how demanding Celtic were at that particular time with that 10,000. And it makes a huge difference. It bring, I agree with Graham. I think it brings a lot of colour to the away fans. Yeah. It adds to the atmosphere. You, know, you need, not need an add into any of this atmosphere because it's electric. Yeah. But it does. It takes something away. And on Sunday now, it'll be Rangers. It'll be 52,000 home fans. There won't be one Celtic fan in there unless one or two of them sneak in, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But all I'm saying is I think it takes something away, you know, just from that atmosphere. And, and it brings colour to the game. Absolutely, you know? John. I think this is a lure of Simon Jordan. I'm sitting here thinking this morning, McCoy's has come and gone. Hartson is here. And now Soonis has stopped off to come in and see you.
I can assure you it's not. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this club's like a magnet. If ever you've worked here, I'm sure it's the same in East End of Glasgow. But once you've been associated with this club, it's there forever. Jim White and Simon.